Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending upon from where you are joining in. So my name is Rakesh Darge, fast track recognized solution architect for Dynamic 365 FO, Microsoft certified trainer and group leader and member of India Dynamic 365 Power Community User Group. First of all, thank you for joining us today. We had 20 plus registration as of this morning. This is the second session in the series of Dynamic 365 Finance Learning. And we always great to have you here, whether you are in India or any part of the world. Today, I'll be joined by Anil. Hey, hi, Anil. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, Rakesh. Hi, everyone. I am Anil Kumar Jupudi. I am a Microsoft Certified Finance and Supply Chain Consultant. I'm currently working in Accenture. So I have worked in uh, AX 2012 R2 R3 T 365 implementations, and I've also worked in various geographies from Australia, Europe and North America. So currently I'm into rollouts and supports in one of the projects. So I'll be taking you through major part of the session today with the finance administration topics. Yep. Yeah, thank you, Anil. So before we start the session, we talk about housekeeping. Please do and try and ask questions through Q&A chat. And also we have a space at the end for Q&A. Finger crossed. As you can see here in the slide deck, uh, last week we talked about there are four sessions that we plan in the learning series. Today, uh, day two, uh, that is session two, where we are going to learn more about the uh, finance administration aspects in FNO. In terms of agenda today, what we are going to see here, today I would like to start with quick recap of our last week's session, where we learn about accounting terminology in Dynamics 365 Finance. And as far as this particular session, we are going to talk about finance administration process in Dynamic 365 Finance. It will be more on use case based theory, where we will try to cover seven to eight use cases, where Anil and I try to walk you through the respect to understanding of use case, then what are the necessary setups those are required in the Dynamic 365 Finance. And if you have any specific question, happy to help you here. Moving on to next slide, if you see here a couple of sections in this slide, a bit familiar as compared to the previous or last discussion. And you might have seen in the previous session, we talked about the accounting principles. We also talked about what is assets, expenses, liabilities, equity, income and revenue, so on and so forth, right? But as you can see here in today's few points on these three golden rules in accounting, and you might have heard about these golden rules in accounting terminology, right? So this is nothing but set of rules which you can apply in your day-to-day -day activity. And similarly, these rules are also embedded as part of any ERP solution. Today, we are talking about FNO. So as you can see here, the first rule, which is the personal account. So I'll go one by one, and then I'll try to depict the view how these rules are going to help you to understand the use case and how you can implement those use cases as part of FNO. So these are the five core types of accounts, what we have learned in the previous sessions, right from asset, expenses, liabilities, equity, income, and revenue. If you look at the first rule, the rule of debiting the receiver and crediting the giver income into a play with the personal accounts. And the personal account is nothing but any sort of ledger or journal ledger accounts where pertaining to individuals or organizations. So as name indicates the personal account, which is nothing but your individuals or organizations, if you receive something, then debit the account in the category of this personal account. And if you give something, then credit the accounts, as simple as that. Now, if you look at the rule number two, which is mainly for real accounts, and use this second when there is a need for a real account. And how can you classify those real accounts, such as asset or maybe for that matter, liability or an equity account, which is comes under the category of the real accounts. So with a real account, when something comes into your business uh, as an asset, then debit the account. And when something goes out your business, then credit the account. Now, if you look at the rule number three, which is a final golden rule of accounting, which deals with the nominal accounts. So we just talked about personal, then we talked about real account, and third category is the nominal accounts, where nominal account includes revenue, expenses, for that matter, gain and loss accounts. And with these nominal accounts, you can debit the account if your business has an income or loss and credit the account if your business needs to record income or gain. So all these five core types of accounts you will see in each and every day to activity when you're trying to implement something and you try to understand the business requirements or business scenario from your customer side. You can easily go and understand and see how these 
rules, three golden rules are going to be applicable to the to the financial world. So with that, I'll take a pause and then I'll hand over the mic to Anil. Anil will walk us through the eight use cases. We'll see one by one, along with the each and every figuration that we are planning to cover in this next 55 minutes or so, where we will see what is chart of accounts, what is main accounts. We will also try to touch base a little bit about financial dimensions and how those financial dimensions are going to be set up. The respective aspect of financial dimension when it comes to derived dimension concepts. We will also try to see a concept of accounting structure. So it is mainly towards Dynamic 365 Finance, but we'll just try to simplify how these accounting structures is going to help you to define the proper validations when you try to post the accounting entry through a journal. Then we will also see towards the end the bank accounts, how the bank accounts are going to be defined and the individual ledgers of that bank accounts are going to be debit or credit based on the scenario. And, and then we also touch base towards, I think there was one particular query from Maharaja and the guy called support admin in previous sessions that wanted to see the, the trial balance. So we will perform all these use cases. We'll do hands on. Uh, we'll understand the journal concept. We we'll understand the, the ledger and all and also the voucher. And then we'll see the trial balance, how the all the accounting entries are look like in the trial balance. So with that, I'll now take a pause and I'll hand the mic to Anil. Anil, over to you. Yep. Thank you, Rakesh. So let me share my screen. Let me know when you can see my screen. Yes, I can see your screen. OK, so yeah, so directly let's jump into the topic everyone. So this is basically the very high level agenda that I'm going to cover. These are the topics and the relevant use cases that we are going to cover on these topics. So I have prepared some sets of topics and the use cases relevant to them. So first we'll you know see chart of accounts and the calendar setup and the currency setup and the and then We'll see two use cases regarding those uh, setups that we have configured and then we'll move on to uh, financial dimensions and we'll see uh, how they are activated derived dimensions and what are financial dimension sets. After we are done with the setups and we go through these setups, then we'll cover these two use cases and next we'll move on to the accounting structure. So how accounting structure basically holds the relation between the main accounts and the financial dimensions. And also what is a voucher? What is a journal? What is balance control? How you can see for the you know bank accounts when you are dealing with that. So all these setups again we'll see and what is a ledger form which is like the heart of the GL module or the legal entity I would say. We'll cover all this and then we'll cover two use cases which are relevant covering these uh, topics. And then finally we'll move on to uh, bank account, which is a sub ledger uh, concept. We'll talk what is a sub ledger and what is a ledger and how check layout and other you know related layouts and formats are set up and where they are set up and how bank transactions can be seen in a bank account. And then we'll see, uh, create a journal entry with a sub ledger entry uh, and select the bank and then we'll see how the transactions are flowing in the bank transactions page. And towards the end we'll We'll go through uh, these basic important reports which every financial you know uh, organization would require the trial balance, the financial reports and the audit trail. So that's the more or less high level agenda of how the session is going to flow today. So without any further ado, let me get started with the initial uh, first set of topics. So first two topics we have discussed. I mean Bharat has covered in uh, you know uh, very detail uh, last in the last class last session so let me just give a quick recap and then create you know one of chart of accounts and one of main account and then we'll go into the main uh, other topics so let me share my uh, d365 screen um okay sorry okay and let me go to the GL module. Chart of accounts. Chart of account. So basically, uh, these terms are very loosely used, probably in other context uh, outside of Dynamics 365. Chart of accounts. Every main account or a ledger account we may call that can also be broadly called as chart of account uh, in an outside world. But in Dynamics uh, finance scenario, the list of all the main accounts that you are using in your, you know. Uh, organization in your legal entity 
in your legal entity that entire list is called chart of accounts so you can have multiple chart of charts of accounts based on how many ever legal entities you are using and you can use one chart of account for multiple legal entities as well so you can uh, basically at least one chart of account you need to have for you know the company to have function and you know uh, have the main accounts configured so this is the chart of account like i said it is a chart or the list of all the main accounts that you have so what does this contain this chart of account basically contains a list of all the main accounts so main accounts we have seen uh, can be uh, different types of your assets liabilities your expense your revenue all these types of main accounts can be created you know each bank account can be created so all these ledger accounts are basically created in the main account form so let me just quickly open one main account and show you so uh, this was covered uh, at a very high level so may, uh, i'll just tell you what are the important or you know mandatory fields and which are relevant for you know configuring a basic main account first thing is you need to have a account number or the ledger account number and then the name that you want to identify that ledger account number with and most important one is the main account type so here main account type basically are the system defined values out of which you will have to choose so these are again uh, if you want to give a specific uh, specificity that if it is a revenue account or an expense account then you can select that select that or else you can broadly say a profit and loss account or uh, if it's like a balance sheet account and you want to give detail asset liability or equity that you can give or balance sheet account and if any reporting related uh, ledger accounts you are creating so for them you can have the reporting this common account type is only for used for only certain geographies not everywhere but uh, very widely used are these uh, revenue expense asset liability and equity main accounts or broadly pnl and balance sheet accounts can also be configured so that's one so these are system defined even in the assets also i can have you know inventory i can have a cash i can have bank accounts i can have current and non current assets so i in my reports uh, let's say in my balance sheet i want to have that categorization i want to have that breakup so for that breakup i will basically uh, need every account to have that identifier so for that i will have the main account category defined so this is a custom or user defined uh, field that i can configure so there is a reference master for main account category in that i can define as many main account categories as i want uh, like i said it it could be breaking down of each asset account or a liability account based on non current or current liability or further breakdowns so and i will tag to the particular main account so whenever i'm you know using uh, these accounts or fetching these accounts in the reporting it will make more sense and i can categorize them and see what are my what is the total of my non current assets and what is the balance of my non current assets or you know inventory value by cash account what is the total of my bank accounts that i can see based on this so main account category is mostly used for reporting purposes uh, this is more of an organization specific so other than that uh, i can also give you know what is the default for this bank account or you know a ledger account so always uh, the values would be on the debit side or on the credit side so that's a, just a default value not a mandatory value and if you want to you know restrict the users to only input values on one side either on the debit side let's say it's an expense account and you don't want any credit entries going into that then you can say for the debit credit requirement you can say debit then system will restrict any credit entries into an expense account or maybe debit entries into a revenue account like that so those kind of restrictions can be uh, achieved from the main account setup here and not only that you can also have some main offset account setup so for example whenever i use this bank account let's say you want to have a specific offset account that is flowing into the transaction always so that default values also you can configure here uh, these are just default values that are fetching into the transactions these are like not mandatory values so this is to make life easier for the you know users and if every value is defaultly fetched it will be easier to punch the transactions quickly and 
if i want to uh, you know restrict any manual entry so for some of the accounts let's say for sales tax accounts you want the system to calculate the sales tax you know percentage values and you don't want any manual entries or manual journals to be posted to certain accounts like a sales tax or it could be an ap uh, total account or ar total account or ar control account so those for those accounts we do use this do not allow manual entry flag so when this is checked that means we will not be able to do manual journals. The system only calculates or adds up those, you know, uh, totals and then fetch the balance in those accounts. So these are the very important setups I thought I will configure. And apart from that, there is a currency that you can default and there is a consolidation account that you can give. So when consolidating between different legal entities, you can have these consolidation accounts so that the bank account in this legal entity, the number and in the other legal entity, what should it match to the consolidation entity? So that configuration will be given here. And so that's about the first section, general section. Apart from that, I'll quickly cover two other things. One is this legal entity overrides, which many of you probably might already know. So if I want to do, uh, if let's say this is this chart of accounts uh, which is shared here, if you can see the chart of accounts is shared under that these main accounts are there. So this chart, chart of accounts is shared across many legal entities and in those legal entities, this main account I want to suspend in one of the main uh, legal entity. So then those configurations I can do and let's say I want to default some dimensions to that main account in one particular legal entity, those configurations which are specific to legal entity that I can do here rather than you know creating multiple charts of accounts you can just have one chart of account and at the same time have restrictions in different legal entities uh, and also default values that is flowing into different legal entities with this feature so basic uh, idea of uh, Microsoft is to leverage and to bring as minimum as configurations as possible and also to give more flexibility to users to define uh, and to differentiate between multiple legal entities when the same thing is being used. Oh, so, and also, like I said, if it is a sales tax or you know uh, any control account that you are posting, so let's say the posting type is sales tax. So you can say only the posting type validations can be set up here. So wherein I will say the sales tax, it is a sales tax account. Only the uh, posting type will be sales tax. Other posting types cannot be posted to this. Similarly, for vendor invoice or customer invoice, all that I can uh define in the posting type here so that's basically about uh, your main account and your chart of accounts so uh, let me quickly create one uh, main account i will say so basically i've given the main account number name and then the only important thing is this one so i will say it's a balance sheet account and rest of the things are configurable as and when whatever is needed, I can configure them. So I will save this. So this is the bare minimum that I have to give. So let's say I will give the. Um, let's see. OK. So that's how we'll create the main account. And then uh, similarly, if I can, if I have want to create a new chart of account, I will, I can create a new chart of account. Let's say I will call it new COA. Okay, and then I can start creating main accounts from here also. It will bring me to the same page. So then I'll have to give these details and then I can add each of the main accounts and in this new COA, I can add my list of main accounts. So that's how you prepare your chart of accounts and your list of main accounts. Okay, so once you do this, the next important setup that, that you need to do is a uh, calendar setup. So uh, based on the geography that we are working in, so the financial year will be different. Like in a uh, in case of North America, it will be 1st January to 31st December is your fiscal year or your financial year. Like in Australia, it is July 1st to 30th of June. India, it is 1st April to 31st of March. So you need to tell the system or define in the system what is the fiscal calendar and how each period is to be defined there. So that definition is done under the GL module. 
there is this calendar setup. So under calendars, there is fiscal calendars. So if I go to the fiscal calendars, I can create a new calendar. Let me show you. So this is the fiscal calendar. So here this fiscal calendar is from 1st of January to 31st of December. So in this fiscal calendar, when I create the first calendar, let me show you. So I'll call it new calendar. And then here I will define the start of my fiscal year. What is the start date and what is the end date? And then I can give a name to my fiscal year. And the most important one is how many periods you want to be defined in the calendar. So for each month you want it to be defined as a period, then you will give the length of period one and then months as one. And then this new calendar will be created. OK, so in this, so if you see based on whatever I have given, all the periods are also created here from one to. So apart from period one to period 12, there are two more periods that are created period zero and period 13. So these are for the opening and closing balances. So when you do a fiscal close uh, from one, one uh, financial year and then move your balances from one financial year to another. So that's when this uh, period zero and period 13 come into play period zero. Uh, this is your opening and period 13 will be closing and rest all will be called as uh, with the type operating. So and if you see 1st January to 31st January, 1st February to 28th February, likewise every month a period is created. So every uh, so let's say once you create a calendar, every time you need not create a new calendar. So once you create this, you can click on new. Let's say you arrived at the year 2023 system will automatically populate the start and end dates of the fiscal year and then you will have to just give the name of the fiscal year and you can say copy from last fiscal year and then you can say create. So once you do that 2023 calendar fiscal calendar, uh, sorry new year in that fiscal calendar is also created. So that is about your uh, fiscal calendar. So now once this fiscal calendar is created, so parallelly in the background, a ledger calendar will also get created. So what is ledger calendar? So once you create the fiscal calendar. So for each period, so let's say you create those transactions in a period and then you do a month and closing activity. I mean, you close the transactions for the month. So that means you, you also need to define that in the system, right? So for that you will basically open the period when you are doing the transactions and then you keep it on hold once you are done with it or once you are not using it. So basically you can in the ledger calendar periods. So each period will have three statuses. So each period will have three statuses. One is open, second is on hold, third is permanently closed. Open is like I said, if you are using that particular period and you are punching the transactions in that particular period, then you will keep that open. And on hold is like a pause. You are not using you will not be able to use any transactions in a particular period once a period is in on hold and third is permanently closed which is not recommended to be permanently closed until the audit and everything is complete but uh, once you keep that as permanently closed you cannot revert it back to open or on hold so it is always you know recommended to keep it either open once the closing for that period is done keep it on hold so that is about the statuses for the periods ledger periods. So here also same fiscal calendar I can use for multiple legal entities, right? So for each legal entity, I can define multiple access also at module level or at functionality level. I can define it in the uh, ledger calendar setup here. One is period status that is across this you know, legal entity. If I can keep that period open or I can period, uh, keep that period as close. Uh, I mean on hold. So that's one. So if I want to, I can also have the leverage of restricting the access for each of the modules or functionalities. So if you see here module level access, I can select each module. Let's say I select a ledger. And then access level I can have all all means all the users will be able to do transactions and none means none of the users will be able to do the transactions. So even if the period is open, I can still restrict a functionality to be not used by any of the users by selecting the none here. And also these are the user groups that are created in the system. So uh, if I select a user groups, that means in that user group, whichever users are there, only they will be able to do or 
access the transactions in this particular functionality or in this particular module. So in that way also I can restrict at a functionality or a module level who can access and who cannot access in, even in an open period. So that is basically all the configuration or uh, the level of restriction that you can do at the ledger calendar level. So once you create a fiscal calendar so that new uh, that new calendar that you created will automatically flow in here. You just have to you know, add rows here and attach this fiscal calendar to a legal entity. Then you can do the configurations for each of the modules and you can, uh, uh, what do you call it? You, you, at the module level also, you can put restrictions if needed. So that is about the ledger calendar. So one more thing is, once you uh, are doing, once you create a new year in a fiscal calendar, right? So 23, let's say, okay. So 22 is there. So once I create a new year in the fiscal calendar, so all the periods that are creating here in the ledger calendars, they will all be coming with the status as open. So initially, let's say you are starting in the month of January. That's when you create a new calendar 2022. So all of these periods are created. So from period two to period 12, I will initially have to, you know, make that as on hold so that no users punch in any transactions in the future dates. Only January transactions are allowed. So that's one thing. Uh, whenever you create a new uh, year or a new calendar, the all the periods that get created in the ledger calendar are in the open status. So that's one thing to note. So that is about your fiscal and ledger calendars. So you have defined your chart of account, main account, your calendars. Now currency should be defined somewhere and the exchange rate should be defined somewhere so that we need to do the transactions in those currencies, right? So let's see where the currency is set up. So in here, under in GL module only, under currencies, you have currencies, currencies master. So in the currencies master, whatever currency you want, you want to do the transaction, you will define it in the system let's say us dollar uh, you will define the us dollar and then give its name and then if any symbol is there you will also define the symbol and also if any rounding rules are applicable that rounding rules you will basically give for sales order purchase order if you want any specific rounding to be followed otherwise it will be by default normal in some of the geographies where you want to you know uh, give the pronounce the you know currency in a particular way in a masculine or a feminine way like in i think uh, one of the geographies is europe in spain so that has a gender to be attached to the currency so then you will define the masculine or feminine uh, gender to the currency also or by default it will always be masculine so this is your currency setup not only usd other currencies are also uh, set up here like an australian dollar euro and all the currencies that you are going to use in your system for your day-to-day -day transactions, all those currencies need to be set up here. So this is just a currency master that this currency we are defining in the system that we are going to use. So there should also be a relation between you know the currencies, right? Let's say you are uh, accounting currency. Okay, let me first uh, talk about this particular term, transaction, accounting, and reporting currency. Transaction currencies, if you are creating a normal journal transaction, so the transaction, the currency that you are using in that transaction is basically your transaction currency. And the accounting currencies for that legal entity, you would be following a specific currency that you want to follow for all the transaction on a uh, uh, wider scale. So that will be your accounting currency. This you will define in the ledger form. So this is specific to the um, entire legal entity and reporting currency reporting currency may or may not be same as accounting currency let's say you have a you are a very big conglomerate and you are you know based out in various geographies and your head office is in you know let's say europe and all your reporting should be in euros at the end of the day but in your north america legal entity you will be doing transactions or your accounting currency will be uh, us dollars so if for every transaction you will have the reporting currency also defined so that will be your euro and all the values that reports that you give in the reporting currency the euro values can also be fetched in the reports with the help of reporting currency so that's basically the difference between your transaction accounting and reporting currency so once we have this currency set up now you know what these different transaction accounting and reporting currencies are there will there should also be a relation between you know what is the exchange rate between two different currencies and 
till what point of time so that exchange rate has to be defined in the system so under currencies only you have exchange rate currency exchange rates master so between two currencies let's say us dollar and gbp pound or us dollar and euro so for each of the pair i will have to define the currency exchange rate that is relevant and i will also can specify a to and from date so in this date range so the exchange rate that is prevalent for the conversion between these two is 73 and for you know gbp it is it could be something else so every time with dates also this values keeps changing depending on your organization policy you will have you will import these exchange rates into your system uh, it could be daily for some let's say you uh, if the client is in, into a gold business or something the exchange rate is relevant every day and if it is like a you know, normal any other business there could be you know scenarios where month uh, you know monthly average can also be taken and that can be inputted here so basically the exchange rate is maintained between currencies here so it is always let's say you're dealing with multiple currencies so many currencies so the conversion or you know uh, from and to currency combinations for each and every currency to and fro cannot be maintained always so for that there is a concept of triangulation so triangulation means uh, basically you will have a us dollar and a euro so here you have a definition for you uh, currency conversion between us dollar and euro let's say for us dollar and inr uh, you have something but we, between euro and inr you don't have let's say you're creating a transaction between that so then the system will automatically calculate between us dollar and euro and us dollar and inr and basically fetch that transaction rather than user inputting all the currency conversion rates between all different possible combinations so that is about your currency exchange rates so let's see a couple of transactions with the help of whatever we have uh, you know seen uh, the setup still now first let me go to the first use case so first use case is basically a simple journal where uh, transaction currency is us dollars and the client uh, employee has spent 300 euros for a client travel visit so this we are recording in uh, the transaction here let me go to a general journal OK, so it is travel expense and between the bank account. So travel expense. 300 euros. And this simple bank account is used here. OK, so I will just validate this one. So this is like a similar voucher that we saw sometime uh, in the last week. So this is validated now. Let me pause this one. OK, that's your first use case where normal uh, an expense transaction happened and you are recording that. So let me now first uh, show you uh, if the calendar is not open how the transaction is being restricted so let me now first go back to the so currently we are in month four so i will go back to the just a second ledgers calendar fiscal period four for usmf let me keep this on hold OK, for USMF period four, I've kept it on hold. Now let me try creating one transaction. For simplicity purposes, I'm taking always general journal, but this applies to every other journal also. So let me take similar example. Let's say Internet ex Internet expense. Mm, and let's say it's some five hundred dollars, and we are paying through. It's a bank account. Date is four thirty. So as soon as I validate, I should be getting an error.
okay so if i go to the message details it will give me fiscal period is not open so your ledger calendar configuration is important here in you know restricting the users and giving them access on when they can post and which all modules they can post it so that's your second use case basically now going back so let's see the next set of topics uh, which are there so we have talked about all these currencies exchange rates and also main accounts now there the next topic is financial dimensions so in the financial dimensions right so financial dimensions could be uh, your department your business unit your cost center so anything which gives more detail to your main account when attached and look together along with the main account anything which gives more detail to your main account uh, can be broadly classified as financial dimension in fact only those uh, to reduce the uh, size of the chart of accounts we have uh, in dynamics we have this concept of financial dimensions um, for example look at it this way let's say you have telephone expenses account and you have 10 departments let's say finance department hr department in your organization finance hr you know some sports department some other so and so for departments you have so if you want to record telephone expenses for each of these departments ideally in every other erp you may be you know creating 10 different main accounts telephone expenses hr department telephone expenses you know finance department like that 10 different chart of uh, I mean, main accounts you will be creating so but in dynamics you can have one single telephone expense and then you will have a financial dimension called a department so in that department your finance sports hr all these will be department values so with that we we will have the leverage and flexibility to plug these financial dimensions along with multiple main accounts and when clubbed and used together in transactions they make more meaning and with that we can also have a minimal amount of setup in terms of setup and master data so that's basically your financial dimensions so uh, financial dimensions basically can be uh, two types in uh, dynamics one is your entity backed dimensions second is custom dimensions custom dimensions first i'll talk about this custom dimensions basically are which are pertaining or uh, which are specific to the legal entity or the organization or the client organization let's say the business units that they are creating they are only specific to that particular organization so um, let's say cost centers cost centers can also be specific to that particular uh, business but uh, there could be also entity backed dimensions like your vendor master could be your dimension your legal entity could be a dimension and a department could be a dimension these are entity backed dimensions because these are all defined as masters or this master data is recorded elsewhere as masters in d365 and those dimensions or those values are flowing into the financial dimensions as the dimension values so that's basically your entity backed and custom dimensions let me quickly go back to the screen and show you the financial dimensions here chart of accounts dimensions financial dimensions so so basically you can have any number of financial dimensions these financial dimensions are common across your legal entities let's say let me take an example of a cost center or a department so department in the organization or admin so we have departments master that is already there so if you define your departments there from there the financial dimension values also will flow here so this financial dimension department can be used with any other main account and tag with it and makes more sense when used let's say you are using a uh, telephone expense or an internet expense in one of the transactions and that telephone expense you have incurred for let's say finance department then in the dimension values you will tag the finance department so when the transaction is posted or when you are fetching the reports by department if you see then it will make more sense okay finance department the telephone expense is this much so these are your uh, entity back dimensions where you will have values from you you will have a master uh, available here let's say customer also customer master is there and similarly you have legal entity as well so all those are custom uh, sorry entity backed dimensions um okay say something like which is specific to only your uh, company let's say primary or some a xyz uh, financial dimension so for all those custom dimensions we will be uh, we need to when i say new 
I need to basically first define here whether it's a custom dimension or an entity back dimension. So what are the entities available? They are all available here. So that could be chosen from this list. So let me create a custom dimension. Let me call it test demo. And once this is the financial dimension, each dimension can have multiple financial dimension values. Okay, it does not take spaces. Each dimension can have multiple financial dimension values. So I can define n number of values. Let's say 001. This is one. I can have so many values in financial dimension. So and I can also have you know activating uh, I mean have them activated for a certain period of time if I want them suspended I can do that and as I said financial dimensions are common across legal entities so once you want a financial dimension value to be available on only in a certain legal entity you can achieve that through legal entity overrides so that section is also available here so so this is just creation of the financial dimension so when you create it it will be in the state of inactive so you have to put the system in maintenance mode to activate this financial dimension then only this will start flowing into your transactions or you know to be uh, applied in other configurations like uh, accounting structures or anywhere else for us to be uh, using this so activating this is important before we uh, do any sort of transaction or configuration along with the financial dimensions so coming back so that's about activation and also entity backed and custom dimensions now let's see what is a derived dimension let me go back to that financial dimension screen okay let me i have for simplicity's sake i have so here just beside dimension values we have derived dimensions so in here i can create a combination of dimension values so that means when department 24 is selected so business unit 001 will automatically be populated. Similarly for 34, 003 will come. So not only that, I can also have a different segment, multiple segments added here. And with that, I can define. So with so many uh, financial dimensions available, right? So once we select a financial dimension, we may not know what is the, you know, required combination of different other business unit cost center, let's say vendor and other things. So all those I can define it in the derived dimension. So as soon as I select the first key dimension, the uh, related dimension values that are re uh, defined here in the derived dimensions will flow automatically into the transactions. So that's the concept of derived dimensions. With this, user will not have to remember everything about the combination, what is a valid combination and what is related to what, even if they are new to the system. So that's about your financial dimensions so once we create this financial dimensions and derived dimensions for reporting purpose right we need to define something called financial dimension sets so what all financial dimensions put together what do we want to see them as so let's say you try your trial balance you want to see only for main account simple main account that is a financial dimension set in itself let's say you want to pull your uh, trial balance with uh, main account and business unit put together. So these two I will define as a set. So this is just a again a master setup that we are doing, which will be available in multiple reports. The simple and foremost important one report is trial balance. So one more example is uh, main account, business unit and department. So these three put together, I can pull the trial balance with this financial dimension set. So how we'll use these financial dimension sets in the trial balance, we'll see in the last use case when we are pulling a trial balance. So that's about the financial dimension set and similarly for integrating applications as you most of you are technical guys you will be mostly uh, have seen this integrating a financial dimension configuration for integrating applications. So ledger dimensions that are used for the external you know third party integrations what all dimensions are to be uh, used so that configuration has to be defined here similarly for budget register entries and budget planning I will have to define those in here. So this is also one crucial uh, important setup that is required at the with the financial dimensions as soon as you configure. Now, so we have seen all this. Now let's see the two use cases. Let me go to this use case three. So <clears throat> you are creating an internet expense for the department 025. So let me create a journal. Oh, 
okay before that i need to do a small thing so this period four we have kept it on hold right so i need to change it to open okay so now let me go back general journals new So internet expense for department 25 IT department. So how much is that? So $300 amount. Let me put the $300. And how is it paid? It's paid through cash. Let me put that cash account here. So one thing if you notice the moment I give the dimension here and select a you know main account here the same dimension will be defaulted here you can go ahead and change it it is just a default value that is coming on the offset account as well so i'll just simulate post and then let's post this one so when when you see this particular transaction with the financial dimension set involving a department, right? This makes more sense. OK, this Internet expense or this particular expense has happened for this department or with this department. So that's how the dimensions make sense. We'll see that in the uh, trial balance when we go through that. So that's how you use basically your uh, financial dimensions in the main accounts along with the main accounts in the journals. So next is the concept of derived dimensions so i have defined a you know uh derived dimension of 34 and 03 right so let me just illustrate that example as well in this use case so if i create a new journal okay so this is okay petty cash and service revenue How much? 1500 is received. OK. So what are the dimensions? Department 034 is used. OK, so let me. As soon as I enter 034. So see the moment I entered 034 business unit 003 automatically defaulted. So that's the concept of derived dimensions. So you the user may not remember everything in terms of what is uh, the valid combination the derived dimensions will fetch them automatically um, in here the petty cash so here the same set of derived dimensions also populated here so now i will validate this and post this one okay so these are basically the application of your using dimensions and derived dimensions in the journals. Let's move on to the next set of topics. Accounting structure, ledger form and journal names. So, so now we have seen the main account and we have seen the financial dimensions. So accounting structure is the place which holds or uh, which holds the information related to both of these and also the valid combinations for each main account and the uh, valid financial dimensions for example let's say you have a balance sheet account and you want to use only certain dimensions with those balance sheet accounts and for pnl accounts you have you want to use another set of dimensions let's say department you want to use only with the balance sheet account and uh, let's say business unit you want to use with the pnl account so that restrictions on what are the allowed dimensions and inside those dimensions also what are the allowed values for each of the main accounts or each range of main accounts that can be set up in the account structure accounting structure so if i go back gl module so under chart of accounts under structures you have configure accounting structures so let me just quickly show you a couple of them so this is the accounting structure that is there. So in this I can give either a, uh, per each row I can give a single account or a set of you know uh, main accounts or a range of main accounts for which this rule is being being applicable. So either I can say this symbol stands for blank values are allowed. Okay, 
uh, and also it is mandatory business units is mandatory but it can be left blank also that means for these set of main accounts business unit will always be there but you can leave it blank as well that's the first thing that you need to understand and for department uh, so if you read it uh, in this way uh, department for this range of main accounts department can be blank or if it is 22 then the cost center values need to be 7 or 8 or can be left blank so for example if i'm using a department 22 in one of these main accounts and if i'm using a cost center 009 then system will throw me an error so either i with department 22 i will either have to leave the cost center blank or i can use either of these two uh, dimension values similarly for this one also for 23 i can either leave the cost center blank or i can use the cost center values from 9 to 12 not anything prior to 9 not anything after 12 so because it's not defined in the accounting structure rule similarly i can define n number of rows based on how many ever you know combinations i want to use and whatever restrictions i want to put in the main accounts so if you if you see at a very high level this is what is um, configuring the main accounts and the financial dimensions so for these set of main accounts these four financial dimensions are applicable and in those also what is the restriction and what are the allowed values so entire that configuration is present in the accounting structure so when you create it it will be by default in the draft state and then you will have to activate it so you can create multiple accounting structures but you will have to define these accounts accounting structures whatever are applicable in the ledger form that we'll see in a short while so basically this is one of your uh, accounting structure let me show you one more and then quickly we'll move on maybe okay so so this is another accounting structure so for this range of accounts these are the business unit acceptable values so five and six is allowed and then 00078 is allowed so with this combination i can use only these departments or i should leave it blank and with this combination i will use this range 15 to 21 or 86 so like that i can have different set of uh, account structures configured so here if you see other than business unit department cost center and item group we have something called retail channel terminal and worker also so for each accounting structure, you can have different dimensions and in each dimension, the allowed values can be configured here. So that is the uh, basic uh, functionality of accounting structures. So now we'll go to the ledger form quickly. So we have seen all these. So all the concepts that we have put together, configured together till now, are all centrally configured in one place and like i said this is the heart of the gl module or heart of the legal entity so chart of accounts which you are going to use for this particular legal entity that you will define you will name the chart of account and then you will give the fiscal calendar here and you you must have created multiple chart uh, accounting structures so what all accounting structures are going to be applied to this legal entity with this main account so that accounting structures you will configure here and also you'll give your accounting currency reporting currency and your exchange rate types apart from this you will also give the currency revaluation accounts so uh, when you're doing a foreign currency transactions right you will have unrealized gain loss realized gain and loss so to which accounts does the system has to post them so that for the for posting those automatic transactions right so currency revaluation accounts are needed here as setup so basically your chart of accounts financial dimensions calendar currency everything is captured directly or indirectly in this form so this is like the uh, heart like i said important configuration before you create any transaction in a legal entity so that's about your ledger form next let me quickly go to the journal names as well so in the journal names like we were using general journal till now uh, apart from general journal 
general journal is basically your journal type daily. So for different purposes, you can create different journal names. Let's say for fixed asset transactions, you can say uh, post fixed assets for invoice transactions, uh, vendor invoice recording that you can say. And for each of those AP invoice, if I say vendor invoice recording, it is there. So based on each journal type, you can define a journal name and use it for a different purpose for AP transaction, AP invoices, you will use it for AP payments. You might have a different uh, journal name altogether. So based on the purpose that you are doing, we will create different journal names in the journal names. Few important things I'll quickly cover. If you want to set up any you know, approval workflow or approval hierarchy, that section is here. You can attach a workflow and then uh, to the journal name. And also you will, the mandatory thing is you will have to give a voucher series. So in that journal, whatever vouchers are getting created. So for that, the voucher series has to be defined in here. And if there is any, for example, sales tax that should, that is all already included in the amounts that you are you know, creating in that journal. So that configuration you will give. If any specific offset account always has to you know, default in the journal name, let's say uh, vendor payments, always the offset account is a bank account. So that you can configure at this level. And apart from this, there is one important thing is posting layer. So I will connect this one at towards the end when we are talking more about um, trial balance. So, but understand it, all our regular transactions are posted to current posting layer. So other than current posting layer, there are other different posting layers also available. Tax posting layer and seven other custom posting layers that are uh, available for us to configure if need be. So when following different reporting standards and you want to maintain different books, then you will use different posting layers. But other than that, you will mostly be using uh, current operating and tax posting layers. So that that setup also can be done here. So apart from this, for the journal names, you can say who who will be able to post or you know, posting restrictions can be placed by specific users or by specific user group. Or in that journal, if you want to give only a set of main accounts can be used, only a set of financial dimensions can be used in the journal name, in the journal, the entries. So those entry restrictions can also be defined in journal control. So that's very at high level about journal name. So now let me talk about the voucher versus journal. So let me go back to one of the journals. So if I go to the journals, so this is the voucher number. So this entire thing that you see, this is the journal number or this is the entire journal that we are creating here. So in this, let's say. I create bank account. So 400 credit and then let's say it's an. Internet expense, so this is one voucher inside the journal if i create a new so here the new voucher number is come so once this uh, voucher is balanced this details for this first voucher is captured it will bring a new voucher number here i can give a new account detail again here so with this i will say 400 and i will say some Say advertising expense. So individual one is called a voucher. So each line or each set of each set of transaction inside a journal which balances the net debit and net credit that is called a voucher and the entire thing is called journal. So here if you can see if the line selected here, that's the uh, if I may put this as let's say 500 for simplicity purposes. So this line is selected. So now the voucher is for uh, 500 and the total journal balance is 900. So that's basically the difference between your voucher and journal in D365 terminology. So and then balance control. So when you're dealing with bank accounts, right? So before posting any transaction, you would want to know what is the balance in the that cut a particular bank account and after posting this transaction, what will be the impact? So before you you know post this transaction, you can go to the inquiries and then click on balance control. So once you click on balance control, so all the bank accounts that are there, their balances will be populated here. So after journal, so I'm using since I'm using this bank account. 
oh sorry if i'm using that bank account so what is the transaction amount and after you post the journal what will be the impact so that balance control will give us the information so here i'm just using directly ledger account if i'm using a bank account and then using a usmf that account and then i can see in the balance control so that's basically my balance control which is available in the inquiry so let me go to the use cases i know we are a little overboard i would need some more time maybe 10 minutes more just bear with me so that we cover few more topics so this accounting structure example let us just first see so it is saying department 22 and let me just see four so if i use department 22 just a second let me delete let me create a new journal so that that remains for one more example So here let me say revenue fees in this department 22 so this department 22 and cost center 14 let's say i give cost center so the moment i give a wrong combination which is not allowed in the accounting structure right so this will give me a error here it's not allowed in this combination so that's basically you know accounting structure coming into play and um, so multi voucher we have already seen how we can create multiple vouchers in a single journal so that's basically your use case 6 in the previous example so let me go back so this covers the entire topic and those two use cases multi voucher journal and now uh, first let's see uh, the reports and then i will quickly touch base on the bank account and those setups so we have created these transactions and posted these transactions right so first important thing that we need to know is trial balance so this can be run for you know a period a set of periods in the finance single financial year so i'm just running it from 1st of january to 31st of december and then i will first simply say only main account so if you see this is the financial dimension set that i'm defining here so what the whatever we defined there we can use it in here and the posting layer to which posting layer transactions you want to see that you will give it here so i will say now calculate balances and it will bring all the transactions for each of the main accounts that happened with within this particular date range so if there are any opening balances they would come here uh, the net debit and net net credit will come here for each of those accounts and what is the closing balance so opening balance plus any debits minus any credits will be your closing balance so if i may have to just quickly show for this one let's say net credits so this 11000 is comprised of all these you know multiple transactions so for 10000 you have one transaction 300 you have three transactions and 100 you have one transaction so th that 11000 credit amount is coming from different transactions here so not only from here you can also navigate from the closing balance same set of transaction will be coming here so this is with simple trial balance with just the main account let's say we want to see what are the different dimensions used it's i will say business unit department and cost center this is the financial dimension set i will use so so with the combination of main account business unit department and cost center so for each valid and unique combination you will have a different row so let's say for this account only so only 110180 when used without any of these so these are the set of transactions so 110180 this bank account is used in with this combination and then this is this is the net transactions that happened and along with only department 
so for each unique combination which you can create those will be uh, populated here which you have used in the transaction and by that combination you can see what is the transaction and what is the total for each of them so you can always drill down and go into the transactions what is the contributing transactions for that particular amount so this is basically your uh, trial balance so needless to say your trial balance will always balance your net debits will be equal to net credit and the balance will be zero so because you are bringing in all the balances for all the accounts right so since we are following a double entry bookkeeping so we will always have two accounts one on the account side one on the account side uh, offset account side or multiple accounts on the account side and multiple on the offset account side but the amounts will always tally so since they tally at every transaction level at a summary level at all accounts put together also your net debits and net credits will always tally so trial balance will always uh, the net balance will be net debits and credits will be summed up and the balance will be zero here so that's about your first balance sheet so other than the balance sheet if you want to you know go for any other financial reports there are some standard reports which are through defined and can be customized through a management reporter that you can use the existing ones which microsoft has given and also make changes based on uh, the main accounts that the customer is using so here not only the trial balance but the balance sheet income statement cash flow and your budgeting reports like actual versus budget so all these reports can be you know uh, pulled up here based on different uh, different dates so all those will be saved and can be retrieved from this space so i'll just pull one simple one let me say generate your yeah, reporting date say okay so this will trigger a batch and with when the batch runs this will bring a report here so the definition and all will be in the management reporter or the financial reporter which is recently called as financial reporter so from there you're getting these reports So until then, let me go and show you another functionality before this gets generated. So all the transactions that we are doing, they're all captured in a place called audit trail. So every transaction that you create is captured in here. So my user ID is DX. So I created three transactions. So only posted transactions will be shown here. We go to the other one. OK, so here the report is generated. So yeah. OK, so yeah, voucher transaction. I can navigate from there and come back to the voucher flexibility of audit trail that uh, irrespective of where all the transactions are created, they will all be seen in the audit trail. And then the balance sheet uh, account that we pulled. So if I just click on this, your balance sheet report as you configured in the MR that will be available here. So other reports that financial you know, uh, management needs the balance sheet income statement and year on year quarter on quarter all these different reports that can be configured and pulled up from this financial reports and so now let me quickly cover the bank accounts so all your bank accounts basically you will create under cash and bank management so under bank account you can create a new bank account and you will give a name that you need to identify and also give the account number that which is the actual bank account number and also define the what is the routing number if any swift code is there international bank account number and most importantly is the main account so whenever you are using a bank account here then the main account to which it should get posted to at the back end so bank account if you see is a sub ledger sub ledger means you are using just this name in the transaction but in the back end it is posting to a different ledger accounts or this sub ledger is you know uh, adding up to a ledger account so this is a ledger account and this is ba each bank account is a sub ledger similarly your vendor and uh, customer also are sub ledgers so in the bank account you have different parameters and different setups for the bank account related identification first two sections are there and anything related to reconciliation if you are doing an advanced reconciliation you have some flags here and let's say if you are issuing some checks and then the check layout and if you are importing a bank statement what is the bank statement uh, format all that you will be defining in here and 
there is a bank transaction screen all the transactions that are held with this bank account or with this subledger they will all be uh, accessible from here in the bank transactions and what is the bank balance at this point of time that you can always see from the balance here so this is at a very high level what the bank account is and what you can configure uh, when you are creating a new bank account let's say i'll just show you what are the need needed uh, configurations at the uh, time of creation let's say bank new and i give some some number and i give this one bank groups if needed you can give otherwise you can always define a uh, i mean leave it blank bank group is to get other transaction details sorry other um, uh, master data details which are common across different banks so those basically you will be giving in uh, here just let me give something for time being no no if yeah so this is other than that other setups that are all uh, not mandatory but you will have to define them for better understanding and for better transaction creation experience so let me just create a sub ledger transaction here and let's go back to our general general ledger gl general journal and then let's create one general journal i'll go to the lines let's say i have some internet expense so this internet expenses is let's say 400 dollars and instead of ledger here i will select the bank so bank is my sub ledger and then i will select the usmf oper account and then i'll simply post this one so once i post this i want you to now let's pay attention to the voucher now the transaction got posted since even though i selected the account as usmf oper and bank so the uh, actual ledger posting happened to this particular account so this is configured in the bank account form that is there in the bank account so i'll show you usmf oper this is the main account is 110110 so to that particular account this got posted so that's how your sub ledger actual transactions be uh, posted when you select them here it will actually get posted to the account that is behind the scenes what is there so this is a simple uh, sub ledger transaction that we have seen so yeah that's about it that's all for today's topics so i think it was some useful you know content and i could cover all the topics that were promised yeah over to you rakesh yeah indeed uh... I think it was a great session. I can see a couple of questions. I think a couple of them, uh, Rupesh and I already answered. There's one question from Shweta. Uh, yeah. Shweta, I'll unmute. Uh, I'll unmute you if you can just describe the question. That will be really helpful. Yeah, go ahead, Shweta. Uh, see, there is was a uh, exchange difference was there. Okay, so mm -hmm. how uh, like uh, you show their exchange difference or what setup? Because sometimes when we convert the currency, there is maybe you get the profit or there may be some losses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how it is the deal there? Like uh, okay, okay, in the financial statement. How it is the deal there? I know that uh, where it will go. Like if it is profit, it will go into the profit and loss credit side. When it is in loss, then it will go into the debit side. Mm -hmm. But uh, I want to know the system point of view. So, um, as a month end closing activity, if you are dealing with your foreign currency uh, transactions, right at the end uh, end of the month, as a part of your closing activities, you will also run. foreign currency revaluation for different modules like ap ar and bank and gl modules so whichever module you have created those transactions right you will run a foreign currency revaluation so your net profit or loss can be you know uh, summed up and that will be posted to a particular account at that point so i have not covered that in detail but foreign currency revaluation can be done at a module level and that will be posted basically to your uh, 
G, uh, ledger account on uh, I mean your realized gain or loss account at that particular for some organizations. This could be like a month monthly activity. Some organizations may do it at you know quarterly activity depending on what is relevant for them. So I could be realized or it could be unrealized gain and loss. Yeah. Well, right? Yeah. So the, the setups I have, I mean, I think uh, I showed very briefly in the ledger form that uh, in the ledger form they are there and also other setups that you need to do is in the posting posting setup. You have some automatic transactions. So if you are posting any uh, uh, foreign currency transactions, then what where should it go? So that is basically. I hope I answered your question. Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. OK. Are there any further questions, folks? I can see we have addressed almost all the questions, Anil, to okay. chat. Okay. I think if there are no further questions, then we can conclude for now. Thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for your time as well, Anil. It was really a good session. I think it is going to be useful for all the non finance and technical folks, those who are trying to understand the finance structures and the finance administration. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you, everyone.